What's up you guys, FSC Truck Shop. It has been a while since I've uploaded on this channel, but it's time to get started. It's gonna be some kind of basic stuff, but nonetheless, it's part of the daily life of an owner-operator truck driver. What we've gotta do now is, despite the fact my shop is now crowded and crammed, well, this is a big goal right here for me, is we do have the entire semi-trailer inside the building, which if you guys remember from the old shop, that was never possible. So today we're going to do some basic maintenance. We have four tires on this trailer that are getting a little bit low that I want to run and replace. Also, while I have them off, I'm going to get ahead and re redo the brakes on them as well. New drums and new shoes and so forth. Also, grease job in the whole nine yards. With that, I'm going to get ahead and get started. First thing I got to do is I got to fire up the air compressor and then uh, I have an adapter to air up the trailer and start jacking them up. Also, from if you've seen on my FSC trucking channel a while back, when this inside tire on this position had failed, they put the outer rim on the inside and the inner rim on the outside. I thought they just got real sloppy with the tire lube, but no, it, rim cleaned up okay, but not as good. So we're gonna try to reverse that. Also, since it was an on a road repair, nobody put never sees on the hub, which will create an issue as far as getting the inner tire off. Plus, I don't know if they did my valve stem um, the way I like it. So I may have to put the extension on there. That way I can air them up easy. So with that, that's how we're gonna get it done. Let's go ahead and get her started. So I got my flat hand to shop air adapter. And an extra length of air hose. Shop here, and then I attach two hoses together. I just gotta go underneath and jack up this side. Ah! 
Now, for whatever reason with these, the hub and the wheel tend to get stuck together. They just seem to like calcify together somehow. So, believe it or not, the way to pull them off is to smack them in. You hear it maybe wobbling a little. It's starting to break free. And I realized this trailer really came with this. My old one didn't have this. I don't know if this is from the factory, meaning if this was newer than my old one, or if the previous owner had this installed. Next, in preparation to taking the brake drum off, I gotta loosen up the brakes all the way and then uh, start bashing on the brake drum, break it loose, which that sometimes could be a really big chore. Brakes are all the way loose, so down. This one's coming off pretty easy, believe it or not. So far, anyway. I need my shop there, so I'm gonna let the trailer brake set, especially since we have them already removed. It's loud when you're inside. That's where I need a key, but I'll deal with that later. What I'm gonna do is just cut the two front springs off of the brake shoes. And uh, that'll just enable them to just come right off. It's easier to cut them than to finagle around and try to, you know, remove them. One spring. Set the shop air. Nice snake that back spring walking around the S cam like so. 
They weren't really needing to be changed just yet, but they're getting down there, so there's no sense in having this all apart and not change them. Alright, now what I'm going to do is clean up the outer edge here. That's where the it rides, the, the rum basically stays centered on this outside rim. And right here, that's what keeps the wheel centered on the hub. That's where they get corroded and stuck. So just take your wheel and lightly clean it down. And then we'll put some never seeds on it. All right, so what I'm going to do is just pull the valve core out. tires on my step deck and as they get down they're pretty close they're probably about four or five thirty seconds but these are Michelin these, these are Michelin XPA2 energies and they're real good tires but as they get down and wear they start doing this crap right here and my step deck did the exact same thing so true the trailer could be slightly misaligned we do run a lot of weight with them, then we run around a lot with not much weight in them, so you really don't know what you're going to do with this tire. The new ones hold up real nice. Just once you start getting down, they start getting a weird wear pattern in them, and then they start chopping and looking real weird. So this is time to go. I mean, this tire, like I said, right around here, the cup and starting to get kind of deep. So, debatable on whether this tire was legit or not. Either way, it's time is gone. It's time to go. Of course, it's the inside one that you don't necessarily see quite as quickly. Now this tire has a now this trailer has a history with tires with me. Um, well, not really a history, I guess. Well, I don't know how you explain it. The trailer came all with decent rubber on there. Not great, but not bad either. Then what happened was the uh, I had one brake freeze up on me. That was the uh, passenger side front end. Smoked those two tires. I replaced those tires and the brakes. Um, fixed all that up. That was some drama on the FSC trucking channel. It was freezing cold and I didn't film that. Then we had that flat tire where I think I hit leftover police spike strip where it cored the tire and uh, was too close to the edge to even think about patching it and it overheated the outer tire. That outer tire later became the spare and the inner tire because it was running around deflated for long enough and wobbling around it had completely chewed the treads off both outside edges. Worse than this so the, uh, I replaced at a shop though, I had them do the inner and outer and that's where they put the rims on, inside, outside, and outside, inside, right? So that was that. The other four tires, two positions, were original to the trailer as I had bought it. So 
this need to be done. So it's the last four tires that I'm replacing today, basically. This is nothing more than Dawn dish soap in a water bottle, shaken, not stirred. There are some really cool tire machines that are made for this. Um, I don't have them. But there is a video where I had a company trailer in Ohio and they put it on a machine and it did what I'd have to do with two tire spoons. It did it in like record time. Problem is the guy said that machine is worth like 10 grand. I don't got 10 grand to spare for that. Nonetheless, you can do it old school. I'm here to show you how. See a basic tire spoon, looks like that. You have two of them. Put it so the dish is up, you know, hub face down. You gotta push this piece of tire in that indent. See right here is the indent. Now push this side down and roll it over. Before you do, about a quarter, that's a full quarter. A little less than a full quarter. Ish, right about there. Put your second spoon in. Do either one. Push there at your foot, roll this one over. I tend to stand on it, hold it down, and then carefully attempt to pull the next one over. I'd probably be a bit too much. Okay, let it back, kick it over, same thing, push it over, step on it, peel it over. Out it came, see? How nice. that one there to hold it still. Another trick you can do, which I'm going to do here, cross the spoons like so, step on it, and just lightly tap it. Trying to tire upward. Now this tire from Widmeyer Express, they use this product called Tire Life. It's like a, well it's like a bag of goo you put in it before you seat the bead on the new one. And uh, it gets pretty nasty, but mostly it helps. I have it. That's also why it looks disgusting. So then you put the flat end or flatter end against it in the notch and then you work like this. That didn't work. Let's try this again.
You need bigger tires, there's enough snot to do it because they're heavier. Almost. There we go. Will this nasty puppy a goo out of here? Next one we got to do with this gooey, disgusting mess, we got to take the valve stem out. There we go. Knuckle. Like everything else. Yeah. Now what I have is a wire brush on my drill. What I'm going to do now is just clean up where the where the bead rides on the rim itself. I'll hold them with the 9 16 wrench and then I'll tighten it up with the 16 millimeter. I thought it was 5 8 for a lot of years, but this one just doesn't quite seem to work with the 5 8 Tighten it and then put a slight bend in it. That way you can get your air chuck on there much easier. Okay, that part's done. And here we are with brand new Michelin. Everybody wants a definition of a monkey pump on a football. You're looking at it. Only difference is the monkey is smarter. I hate these tires. 
They are so worth it in the trucking world for their longevity and the ability to take a beating. But this crap sucks. Alrighty, here's a tire life I was telling you about. Casing and rim protection program. Safely identifies leaks, protects wheel, improves retreadability, reduces air loss, labor savings, improves balance, used in fleets nationwide. Sounds good, right? All you do is chuck it in the tire. Suppose when you air up the tire, it pops the bag. I probably should, but I don't have a cage. So what we do is wheel it over here against the garage door and then stay away from it while we air it up. Now I run these tires at 125 PSI, conveniently it's a little under where that compressor cuts off. So when the compressor cuts off, then all you have to do is let a little air out of these tires. There you go, so let's see the bead. Girls. Sadly, yesterday, you probably heard earlier in the video that my audio was getting real fugazi. Uh, I think I have it, I think I have the problem solved. So, luckily, I uh, didn't get to finish, well, I filmed it with no audio on that side. We're on the other side of the trailer, we're on the rear position. So, we're gonna continue with the video where I left off on the other side. We're just gonna do it on this side, but the process still remains the same. One of the things I wanted to show you was the new brake shoes and installing them. Now, I've been getting them through Widmeyer Express because our shop at Widmeyer's is a dune and trailer dealer. So, we get our parts from them for the trailers. Not always, but this particular time I did. The good thing about it is there's no core charge. 
so I don't have to worry about that. The old shoes, just chuck them. However, we do gotta put the hardware on the brakes. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Some stuff you need, some stuff you don't. You need the two rollers for the S-cams. Some guys change these pivot points. I don't see a need for it. That's just a lot of extra work, there's no need for it. Now, with that, you have to hammer in these pins. They go on, at least on this one, they go on the side where the roller goes over here. Because that's the spring that goes in the middle. And it hooks on that like so. But you have to install it first. So that one, oh, it helps if I put it in the right hole. Sorry, boys and girls. To demonstrate, that hole is for these clips here. Hammer, here we go. Set it in the hole. Now, why they don't come in with these installed, I don't really know. Just put them in like so, drive them home. They'll fit in there loosely like that. They won't fall out. Good to go. Next one, flip them to the little, little side here. Not the big pivot point, but the roller side. Take your next pin, put it in like so, set it in there, and then blammo. Done. In it goes. Nice and loose. That's where this spring will attach in the future. Now, next I have to put these rollers on. Now, this looks like you could do it backwards. And uh, from yesterday, I realized that this won't go in unless you really twist and turn and whatnot. It's just no point in that. All right, so these, what I did is I just simply bent them out a little bit. Not a lot, just enough. Because they're gonna clip into these holes here. Now, if you put them in backwards, it looks like eventually they'll run on the linings. If you put them in like so, this part will be here and it could start rubbing against the drum as the lining wears down. So flip them the other way. One side hooks in, the other side hooks in. I suppose if you want, you could bend them back flat. Don't look like they're gonna go anywhere if you do or don't. The roller goes in, like so. Roll it over and that's connected. Now, when you install the brake shoes on the trailer, you might be able to just roll the roller off and then roll the roller in after you set your spring. But I found a better way to do it. And that's the way I prefer to do it. So, like on that side, bend these tabs. I might not have bent out one enough. Let's see. And it goes, and it goes. Flatten them in. Them in. All right, take where's the roller? Here we are. Roller in, snap on, slide over. I said slide over. Um, not everything listens. There we go. And I'm over. I like it. All right, now install that on the trailer. All righty, I'm about to show you the trick. What you do is you put the two together like so, and they just dangle. Sorry if I'm in the way, but working and filming don't always work well. So what you gotta do is you gotta fish that spring between the S-cam and the axle. Kinda like so. And then just those go like that. All right, now to the other side. This is probably not the official way to do it, but this is the way I do it. So all I need is a, a spring, vice grip, and screwdriver. Do the back one first. Hook the top in the hole that we are pulling downward. Sorry, I have to change the light so I can see what I'm doing. Might not be good for video, but I'll try my best. Take your vice grips, clip it on the spring. There 
here we are. Now what we do prepare to put the tire on, we're not going to put any never seize on the threads, but we do want to put never seize on here because that's where the rims get stuck on the hubs, especially the inner one. The outer one always comes off pretty easy. It's that inner one, it really fights you. I think my step deck had four of these tabs where this one's only got three. That did seem to solve the problem some. <laughs> Alrighty, next on is the hub, is the hub, the drum. Now, the drum has this little section right here labeled valve stem. It's a relief that's cut. I don't know if that's a weight thing or a clearance thing, but I'm pretty sure it's a weight thing because they don't always line up between the two uh, holes. The last one was kind of like over here. So, um, I try to line them up right, but I, I put valve stems on opposing sides when I put the wheel on. In other words, the inner is high, the outer is low, or vice versa. But either way, now it's time to put the hub, I keep saying hub, the drum. It's time to put the drum on. And uh, they're not light, boys and girls, by any stretch of the imagination. Here we are. Alrighty, so the valve stem relief is straight up. I have it rotated so it's straight up on there. And actually it tires the other way. So you know what, we're just gonna spin the drum so it's straight down. There you go, that's pretty close. The other thing that I do is I line these up and I put the extension on the inner tire. That way it's easier to put air in or check the air from the, you know, it fits through the other tire. Perfect. Just got to make sure you don't mess that up. Position this tire so the valve stem is straight up. I'll walk it over. Oh, looky there. Look what's peeking through. Next we lubricate the washers. These are captured washers on the nuts, see? They don't come off. So we lubricate them slightly. A little bit of PB blaster. Some use like a little bit of engine oil. Either will work. PB blaster is a little bit more of a lubricant in addition to a penetrating oil where uh, WD-40 WD actually stands for water disbursement, so I don't know, I don't find it to be the most handy thing on planet Earth, to be honest. I like my PB Blaster. And they do not sponsor this channel or any of my channels. If they want to, I would welcome it. Take all of them and start them in by hand. Unlike Orwell, 33 millimeters don't have left-handed threads to them. They are standard thread on both sides. Orwell, one side is left, the other side is right. Kind of like uh, knock-off lowrider wheels. 
Plymouths and some old Fords are like that too. Excellent. And now we sink them down, but not too tight because we're going to torque them properly with a torque wrench. this tool but before I set it down I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the brakes properly while I have the shop air to it then I'll set the brakes by taking the shop air off of it and then uh, we'll torque them down Now what I've got is my torque wrench set for 500 foot-pounds, my one inch to three quarter or three quarter to one inch adapter. And now, oh, let me set the brakes. Now with my torque wrench set to 500 foot-pounds, now it's time to start torquing them. The other thing I do when I torque them, put a cap on, I keep track of which ones I did, which ones I didn't. proper torque on these is 450 to 500. I go straight to 500. The reason you want to torque them is if you just smash them down with the impact you could stretch the stud. You'll have them torque, you'll over torque them, stretch the stud, weaken and break them. Of course loose is loose and you know what that gets you. Either way too little too much gives you the same problem. <laughs> 